So there are a few word problems here, okay? For kinematics, uh, for someone who's doing introductory physics, maybe grade 11, or some intro course in post-secondary. So let's dive in. So here's the first one. A droplet of blood in a tubular experiment has been observed to move at a speed of 12 centimeters per second. So let me highlight this for myself. So this is what it's moving at. The droplet started to decelerate uniformly. So we have a deceleration and it decelerates to a speed of 1.5 centimeters per second and that takes 85 seconds in total. Okay, now they're asking us to find out what the acceleration is in meters per second squared. All right, um, so we'll dive into that. So what is happening here? So we have a given and now, so for this particular blood drop droplet, okay, let me just draw it out here for you. So what's happening is it is moving. Now we don't know exactly how it's moving, if it's a straight line or not, whatever it might be. We don't have any directions in this case, but we do know that initially it is moving at 12 centimeters per second, or if you don't like the centimeters, and since we're gonna have to do our answer in meters per second squared, you know, then maybe we should change this back to meters per second. And notice that's from centi back to uh, meter, which is the base. So you're just gonna move the decimal two places over. And now eventually, okay, so this, this blood, um, so somewhere down the line, okay, we'll get to, uh, to 1.5, and maybe let me put that in a different color. So this would have been your final, okay, speed, so VF, and that's 1.5 centimeters per second, all right? And this entire process, so this whole process, so how long does this take? It takes 85 seconds, all right? So that would have been our delta T, right? So that is the total amount of time that has elapsed. Now, if you wanna know what the acceleration here is, it's actually not that difficult to be able to find it because the acceleration, now, we don't really need a vector notation in here because we just have our initial and final speeds and this is the time and we're just simply um, asking what the acceleration was. Now notice that we're slowing down so the acceleration will be negative in this case. So this would have been just simply delta V divided by delta T. So that's the equation that we would use for the acceleration and this is the average acceleration. And if you Take a look at that, so that's V final minus V initial. So that's 1.5. Um, actually, let me just change this back, okay? So this is a good catch that I've cut it in time um, because the unit is in here, so notice centimeters per second. So that is 0 0.015 meters per second. So yes, you know, we wanna make sure that we have all our units. So this is gonna be meters per second meters per second and we want this in seconds and all of this is because of the fact that this is in meters per second squared right so that's what the acceleration needs to be in so just be careful because i almost fell in that trap there so we have 0 0.015 so now it's meters per second so i'll drop the unit minus again, this is going to be 0 0.12 and then divided by uh, 85 all right so now what is the acceleration? Let me take out the calculator here. So 0 0.015 minus 0 0.12. And that answer divided by 85. So it's going to be a small number in there. So it is negative 0 0.00. So we have uh, two maximum sig figs. So I'll round this off. So 0 0.0012. And this is going to be meters per second squared. You know, and you may want to write this in scientific notation. So I'll put this in scientific notation. So negative three meters per second squared. All right. So we have no direction here because they don't give us any directions. Okay. So this is what the answer would be. Okay. So that's the first example that I have for you. Here's the second example. So an x-ray machine has been transported on a flight going west. All right. Okay. So again, Let's make this visual since it's a word problem right here. So we're going west. So we're, you know, west, I guess, it's gonna be in this direction, okay, in here. 
So that's where we're going. Let's assume that that is west. Now, the current average velocity um, of the airplane is 550 kilometers an hour west. All right, so this plane okay, is moving at, so this is the velocity, I guess it is a vector, and this would be 550 kilometers per hour, and it's going in the west direction. And there is no acceleration, okay? So acceleration is basically equal to zero. Uh, what the displacement did the airplane experience over a flight duration of 3.2 hours? Okay, so the total time is 3.2 hours. Provide answer in kilometers, okay, and this is going to be kilometers west. So everything is actually, so this is kilometers, this is hours, there's no acceleration, this is hours. So we don't really need much in this example. So if you recall, so if you want to know what the displacement is, you now don't forget that for your velocity, okay, so this is the change, okay, in displacement overall, okay, is all over the change in your time. So you are trying to solve for this right here. So if you're going to rearrange this, now of course this is going to be just simply equal to delta D. Um, is equal to the this the speed or the velocity multiplied by and this is going to be times delta t right here now the delta t is just a scalar so this is nothing else but okay, as you substitute this in 550 kilometers per hour multiplied by now of course this is west so 3.2 hours so the hours will just cancel each other off and then you get your displacement. Now, the vector, so we know that this is west because our velocity was west. So we have 550 multiplied by 3.2, and that would be 1760 kilometers. Now, in here, so again, just be careful. You know, you may want to take a look at the significant digits. Okay, so this one has two, this one has two. So you may want to, okay, um, put this. Now, if you're going to round this to two significant figures, then this would have been 1800 kilometers. All right, as your answer. Okay, so let me just double check. All right, so yeah, so they don't say anything to round. So I'm just going to round to the correct number of sig figs. So that's another nice example here for you. Here's the third example in this video. So while hiking, Bartek unknowingly hit a rock with his foot. The impact has an initial speed of 0 0.2 uh, meters per second. Bartek's foot comes to rest in 0 0.0195 seconds. Okay, so let's imagine we have a rock. Okay, so here's some kind of a rock. All right, now that particular rock, now I don't know how good my foot here will be. All right, so here's my foot right there. Okay, and what this is saying is that, you know, so as you're going along, it doesn't give us exactly a direction, but, okay, so we, we hit this particular, okay, rock. I guess we didn't see it. So this is the initial speed, okay, or velocity. So this is 0 0.20 meters per second. And we know that we come to basically rest, so pretty quickly, um, in a split of a second here, so 0 0.0195 seconds. What that means is that your final, okay, rest means that this is equal to zero, all right? So this is zero meters per second. Now, if it's at rest, by the way, whenever you're working with this, you know, you can assume that this has as many significant digits as you like, okay? Because so this is just a precision of zero and all the other numbers, okay? So this is gonna have two significant figures this is gonna have three significant figures, all right? So rest always is not, you know, when, you write, when you're reading zero, okay? And don't think that you have zero significant figures. This is actually a kind of a precise measurement. When they say rest, okay, assume it has infinite number of precision. So coming back to this example, as you're moving along here, so it says, what acceleration was experienced? Okay, so in terms of acceleration, so that's not very difficult. So the acceleration that we have is equal to 
and that acceleration is delta v over delta t so that's just by definition so this would have been your v final minus your v initial so within here this is all in meters per second and this you know stops pretty quickly so this is going to be probably quite a big deceleration as we're going to see here and that's going to be negative and it's 0 0.2 to zero divided by 0 0.0195. So we have, so yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty quick. So negative 10 point, you know, two, five, six, and you know, four, one, etc. meters per second squared. Now, if you wanted to round this to two, I guess, two significant figures. Okay, so this is gonna be tricky because it's gonna be negative 10 but you can't write it like this because this would have one sig fig, so you can put it in scientific notation. And if you do it like that, then this has two significant figures, all right? Now, for our calculations down the line, so I'm gonna just, you know, not use the rounded one, I'm gonna use the original one, okay, which is this one. But for our final answer, you know, you can certainly put this. So let's go back in here. How far did the foot travel until it stopped okay okay so how far did it travel now because we have both the initial and final so this is going to be for part b so we have both the initial speed we have the final speed right and then we have uh, delta t now we've calculated acceleration so we can certainly use that now if you go back into kind of your uh, equations for kinematics then you should kind of remember that the change, all right, so this is the change in your displacement, is nothing else but simply your initial plus your final, okay, divided by two, because this is simply just the average, right? So this is the average uh, velocity over that time, okay, because it's uniformly decelerating in this case, and this is gonna be multiplied by delta t, Okay, to be able to find this. Now, you don't have to just use this equation. You can use any equation for delta t that you like to be able to solve. Just this one is very simple because our initial, which is 0 0.20, you know, our final, which is zero, so that makes this calculation very simple. So this is going to be that. And then delta t, uh, in our case, which was given 0 0.0195, 0.0. 195 seconds all right so you know how far did we travel well we, we're not going to travel too far okay with this foot so 0 0.2 divided by 2 is just 0 0.1 and then multiplied by 0 0.0195 well it's a puny amount all right so if you're going to hit a rock okay with your foot and it's a big enough rock it's not going to really move anything okay at all so your foot may be just you know by a speck Okay, might move a little bit, okay, within, but that's that's going to be it, right? So again, if you're going back to sig figs, mm -hmm. you're bound by two significant figures, which is the lowest amount from your measurements. So you can certainly round this if you like. So that's going to be zero point, you know, zero zero, and I guess this would have been two zero meters, or you can put it in scientific notation, and that's going to be ten to the negative three meters so it's minuscule right amount so that would have been part b now let's take a look at part c a pain signal uh, travels approximately at 3.5 miles per hour all right and that is to our brain now how long did it take okay for bartek's brain to register this pain so let's take a look and we're assuming that bartek has a height of 176 all right so just a reference okay so if you notice that in the question okay so right here you know there's a little bit of a footnote okay so you can certainly take a look at the online reference okay over here okay so if you like um, which actually talks about kind of the signal sent to the brain um, now for us what we need is we want to be able to find out what the calculations are here so in terms of, this is for part C, so the only given or the extra given is the actual height, and that is 176 centimeters 
or simply 1.76 meters. So since everything has been in meters and seconds, I'll keep it that way. So what is happening? Well, you know, so like let's say if this is, okay, so if that's Bartek right there, you know, from top to bottom, so the signal from the foot is going to be traveling all the way up, okay, to the brain. And you wanna know how long that has taken well, so if we know what the speed of that signal is, so if they say that the speed, okay, I'll put a little B for brain, okay, so to the brain, so if you look back here, it says it's 3.5 miles per hour. So this is 3.5 miles, okay, so per hour. So you can write miles per hour in this way. It's gonna be easier for us to convert. We don't wanna use miles or, um, and hours in here. So let's take a look, let's compute the actual time that this has taken, Okay, let's do it in seconds, all right? So let me convert the speed. So this particular speed would be, I wanna get rid of miles. Now, one mile, okay, is equal to 1610 meters, okay? So we can certainly do that, and you can uh, definitely look it up, okay, so within. Okay, your resources, so we have that. So if that is equal to, um, that will now give us, okay, the result in meters. Now we don't want hours, I want it in seconds uh, because it's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna take hours to get to the brain. It's gonna be a very short period of time. So let's see how long that would be. So I'm gonna convert this. So one hour, okay, is 60 minutes, okay, and then one minute, Okay, is 60 seconds. So if you do that entire calculation, let me move this time out of the way, then what will we get? So this is a nice good conversion in here. So this is 3.5 times 1610. So that is on top, and that answer is divided by, so it's gonna be 60, all right? And then your answer divided by 60. So this is equal to 1.56527. It looks like a bunch of sevens. This is meters per second. Now, normally we would just keep it to two significant figures here, uh, but this is not our final answer. So I'll just keep these digits okay, um, there for us okay, in order uh, to finish this off. So now we have the speed right, and we have the distance that it needs to cover to the brain, which is 1.76 meters. All right, so what we have is, well, we know that the speed is equal to the distance, right, divided by the total time, okay, that we have. We don't really need the deltas in here at all. Uh, we're not vectors or anything of that nature. We're not, you know, having a change in here. So now if you rearrange this, it's gonna be delta t is equal to the distance divided by your speed, and we have both of them. So your distance, which was equal to 1.76, that's the height, right, that it's going to the brain, so that's the distance it has to cover. And then we have this 1.56, you know, five, two, seven, et cetera, okay? that's what we would have. So I can enter this in 1.76 divided by 1.5652 and a bunch of sevens. You can just put as many as you like there. Okay, so now this just gives us, so this is one point and here I can round, right? So originally, I guess I was bound by really two significant figures, which is the 3.5 miles per hour. So this would have been 1.1 seconds, all right? so that's how quickly it would have gone to the brain. Now you would think that maybe it goes much, much faster, um, you know, to the brain, okay, so from the actual signal, but this is, okay, based on the signal that is given and its speed, that's what the answer would be, all right? So that's another example for you. Here's the last one, uh, at least for this video. So an ambulance approaches an intersection 35 kilometers an hour west, the ambulance accelerates at 4.5 meters per second squared west for 4.9 seconds, okay? So what is the displacement um, that it experiences in kilometers? All right, so let's take a look here. So what is given? So given pieces of information right there, 
So we have an ambulance, it's moving west. So this is west, so I'm gonna just draw it out. Okay, so in this way. So we have this ambulance, it's kind of moving along there. Now it is moving at, so this is right here, so VI, and that is 35 kilometers west. Okay, so kilometers per hour. And I'm gonna put their west right there. And it is accelerating. Uh, notice that it is 4.5. This is meters per second squared. Okay, so this is west, so everything lines up in our directions, so that's good. Now, the only thing or the problem that we have is that your speed is kilometers per hour, and then acceleration is meters per second squared. So, you know, we're going to have to kind of be careful in here as we're going through here. So, let's take a look at what we have. Now, this entire thing, it takes, so the total time is 4.9 seconds. All right, so that's how long it takes. Um, and if you want to know what the displacement is, so, well, for the displacement, so this is for part A. Well, the displacement would be, we know the time, okay, so we can use okay, the equation. So this is, would have been VI, and this is times delta T plus one half, the acceleration, okay, that we have, and this will be times delta T squared, right? So we have all of these pieces of information, so we can certainly do these. The only thing that we have to be careful with is the acceleration is meters per second squared. Now, this is also in seconds, okay? So, you know, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change this VI uh, to meters per second. Now, I know that they're asking us for the displacement in kilometers, but I can find it in meters and then I can just change it to kilometers. That's much easier for me to do. So 35 kilometers per hour. And if you want to change this back, right? So now going from kilometers to meters. So well, that's not very difficult, actually. So let me just do that first. So this would have been three five, okay, and multiplied by, really by a thousand, right, because you're moving. So now this is meters per hour. And now to change the, to get rid of the hours, well, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then one minute is 60 seconds, all right? So if we do that, okay, so let's put that in here. So three, five, one, two, three, divided by 60. Okay, and then answer and divide it by 60 again. So this is 9.72. And again, I'm gonna put, because it's 22222. So I'll put a little bar there. So this bar just simply means that those twos continue. And I'm not gonna round anything yet because it's not my final answer. So now that I have that, I can substitute this all back in. So substituting it in, so within here, so what do we have? So VI, 9.72, check. Delta T, so that's 4.9 seconds, check. Plus one half, the acceleration is 4.5 meters per second squared. Notice everything now is meters and seconds squared. And finally, okay, so this will be 4.9, and this is gonna get squared. And this will give us our final answer. So let's put it in. Well, I already have this, VI. So times 4.9. All right, so that's my first thing that I have. I'm going to actually keep this all in one. So, you know, this is what I have right here. So that's 47.6, etc. But I'm going to just keep it on the calculator. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say plus. And now as you're doing this, I'm gonna just put it all in the, in brackets, so the right-hand side there. So that's one half, one half is 0 0.5, times the acceleration, 4.5, times 4.9 squared. And now I can close the bracket, all right? So that's that right-hand side. So that means I'm adding both of them together. All right, so let's see what that is. 
Okay, so in total, okay, so this right here, I actually don't know exactly because I put it all together in the calculator, but I do know that the total is 101.66, etc. Now, rounding this, so I guess I had originally, again, I'm bound by two sig figs. So if you're going to round this um, as it is, okay, so rounding this to two significant figures, this would be actually 100. And if you want to show those two significant figures, you would put 1.0 times 10 to the two, and this would have been just meters, right? Or you would have to let the person know that it has two significant figures. So there you go. That would be the distance in meters. If you want this in kilometers, well, then you can change. So going from meters to kilometers, you have to shift the decimal. So this would have been shifting the decimal three places. So one, two, okay, and three. So this would have been 0 0.10 kilometers. And now this is to do significant figures because you have a decimal in there. So there you have it. So that's part A. So for part B, at what velocity was the ambulance moving after the 4.9 seconds? Okay, and this is in kilometers per hour. So this is what we wanna be able to find, which is really the final, final velocity. So for part B, right there, we wanna find final velocity, right? So this is what we do not know. Now, we do know the acceleration, right? Um, we actually have calculated even the, the total distance, okay? So let's take a look. Now, how would we find this? Now, because we know the acceleration uh, within here, so the acceleration is 4.5 meters per second squared, um, we know the initial uh, velocity there, um, and then we know the delta t. So from that, um, you can use the acceleration equation. So the acceleration equation is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, right? So this is probably going to be the easiest. And now you can keep it all, all in meters per second first, um, and then you can just simply change it back, right? To uh, Because it's asking for kilometers an hour. So let's do that. So the acceleration, which was 4.5, uh, that's meters per second squared. Uh, this is equal to, so on top, the in, uh, final one, which is what we're trying to find, minus the initial. Now, the initial we've already had already because we've converted it, so that's there. So that's 9.72, okay, dot, dot, all over, and then delta T. Actually, I forget. I think that was... Okay, so it's 4.9 seconds. All right, and now you just have to solve for VF. Okay, so let's do that. So multiply both sides by 4.9 to get rid of the denominator. So that's gone. Okay, so that's both sides multiplied. Um, and so what would that give us? So 4.9 times 4.5, 22.05. This is VF minus 9.72. Now we're going to bring this over to the other side. So this is going to be 22.05 plus 9.72, so one. And there you have your VF, okay? So for VF, and so it's going to be 22.5 plus 9.72, and you can put as many twos as you like there. It won't matter because we're gonna be rounding this off anyways. We're gonna round it to two significant figures based on what's given, and this would be in 32. But this is 32, oh, actually I have to be careful here, so I won't actually write it out yet uh, because they want it in kilometers per hour, right? So I'm gonna put 31.77 and, and a bunch of twos. That's meters per second. And now you would have to convert this to kilometers per hour. So if you're converting this to kilometers per hour, so as you're going through, so the meters, okay, two kilometers, well, so that's going to just change. So you're gonna switch the decimal three places over. So 0 0.03177, you know, and a bunch of twos. 
So that's now kilometers per second. And now to change this, then you can change this back. Okay, so as you're going through, and that would have been 60 seconds is one minute, and 60 minutes is one hour. So the minutes cancel, seconds cancel, okay, and you have what you wanted. So that answer, okay, so that you have, well, it's like dividing by 1,000 for the kilo. So that would have been that. And then you're multiplying this by 60 and multiplying it by 60. So, okay, it's this thing's moving pretty quick, right? Actually, I'm not going to write. Now it's in kilometers per hour, so we can round. So rounding this to two sig figs is 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, and the direction is the same. So notice that the directions, okay, for all of these were west. So this is going to be west as well. All right, so let's clear that off. All right, and that ends uh, this one. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.